Number 8. Zach Rodder In 2019, a woman and her daughter were left homeless after her psycho ex burned down their home in Redruth, Cornwall, England. Charlene Clark and Zach Rodder, both in their early 30s, had a child together during a relationship which had lasted roughly 15 years. In March, Rodder left Clark for another woman. It was an unexpected move which Clark claimed had left her heartbroken. Only a few weeks had passed before Rodder tried getting back together with Clark, but she stood her ground and refused to accept reconciliation. Rodder, however, wouldn't leave the family home, pointing to his name also being on the mortgage. One night, Rodder and Clark attended a family memorial at a friend's house. Rodder got intoxicated and asked that Clark return home with him, which she declined to do. Enraged, he got back to their house and set fire to a mattress. He then sent Clark a series of threatening messages, one of which read, Look, see the light? I warned you. Rodder went to a pub where he told other patrons that he'd started a fire which grew out of control. Not only had the blaze ravaged Clark's home, but it also expanded to three other terraced houses, prompting their occupants to flee for their lives. A disabled woman in one of the burning homes was only rescued because her caregiver was at the address at the time. In the aftermath, the insurance company refused Clark a payout because Rodder was the policyholder. Even though the fire had gutted the homes, no one was seriously hurt and Rodder was sentenced to six years in prison. Number 7. Berlina Wallace In the early hours of September the 23rd of 2015, Mark Van Dongen awoke at his ex-girlfriend's Bristol apartment to the sound of her laughing and saying, If I can't have you, no one else can. Within moments, Van Dongen experienced excruciating pain as sulfuric acid was thrown on his face and body. He ran into the street screaming in agony and alerted neighbors who called the authorities. 29-year-old Van Dongen's injuries were so severe that roughly 10 months had passed before he was able to speak about what had happened and give his account of the attack. The Dutch-born victim told the police that he'd ended his five-year relationship with Berlina Wallace, originally from South Africa and nearly 20 years his senior. Van Dongen had started seeing another woman, but agreed to spend the night of September the 22nd at Wallace's home as he felt sorry for her, but also because she still had his passport. In an act described as pure evil, at around 3 a.m., Wallace dumped a glass of sulfuric acid on his face and body while he was in his boxes and had no form of protection. The impact was devastating, with a degree of disfigurement so severe that officials didn't release the photos of Van Dongen's face, but only those of the bedsheets, blackened by the corrosive fluid. Upon arriving at the hospital and seeing the extent of the damage, he reportedly began to scream and beg, kill me now. He spent four months in an induced coma and was left paralyzed from the neck down. Van Dongen lost an ear, the sight in his left eye, and most of that in his right while his lower left leg had to be amputated. On January the 2nd of 2017, Van Dongen ended his life by euthanasia at a clinic in Belgium. Wallace tried to place the blame on the victim, claiming that he'd put the glass of acid on her bedside table, intending for her to unwittingly drink it. Her story didn't hold up in court, as there was insurmountable evidence pointing to her, including dozens of websites in which she'd researched the acid's effects. She was sentenced to life in prison, with a minimum of 12 years served. Number 6. Karina Vanessa Corbalan In March of 2020, a Florida Instagram model was arrested for fatally shooting her ex-boyfriend outside his Hylia home. 23-year-old Karina Vanessa Corbalan and Alejandro Sanchez, aged 28, had had a troubled relationship and, according to neighbors, were no longer together at the time of the shooting. Corbalan's popular Instagram page showed the blonde influencer posing in the foreground of several exotic locations, but featured no photos of Sanchez, an argument the nature of which remains uncertain erupted between them and culminated with Corbalan shooting at Sanchez 15 times. Five of the bullets struck him in the chest. The victim's mother was at the scene and she was heard screaming at Corbalan that she'd killed her son. Corbalan in turn presumably not realizing the damage she'd done was reported to have called out to her ex, wake up, wake up Alex. Officers arrived to the scene and found her kneeling over his body as well as a black Mercedes, the windshield of which was riddled with bullets. Sanchez was airlifted to Jackson Memorial Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Corbalan made her first court appearance in a vest designed to deter self-harm and was ordered to be held without bail. Number 5. Stephen Booth in May of 2021, 
a builder from Manchester, England, murdered his ex-wife with an axe, then called the police to come and arrest him. Stephen and Susan Booth, both in their 60s, had separated three years prior. Up to that point, they'd shared a home in Shaw near Oldham, which Stephen had had a significant role in building. The divorce proceedings were being finalized, and the marital home was proposed for sale at over $620,000. Susan had asked for half of the money, which enraged Stephen, as he felt that she didn't deserve it. Stephen, who hadn't talked directly to his ex for two years, was out walking his dog when a solicitor told him that the sale would be completed in three days' time. It was at that point that he started plotting Susan's murder. On May the 4th, he lay in wait at the home until she returned from a shift at the Royal Oldham Hospital. He struck her from behind with an axe and then continued his gruesome attack, ultimately inflicting 19 axe strikes, most of them to the head. Susan sustained devastating injuries and was pronounced dead shortly after being rushed to the hospital, where she worked. Stephen called the police and told the operator that he'd just killed his wife and that officers should be sent to his home address to arrest him. He pled guilty to murder and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 22 and a half years served, meaning that he was likely to die behind bars. Number 4. Samantha Mears In 2019, a woman was sentenced to 20 years in a mental health facility for a 2018 incident in which she'd forced her ex-boyfriend to have intercourse with her while threatening him with a machete. Montana woman Samantha Mears broke into her ex-boyfriend's home while he was out at a gas station. When the unnamed victim entered the bedroom, she approached him from behind, pressed the blade to his throat, then ordered him to remove his clothes and get on the bed. She then climbed on top of him and they had intercourse, with Mears reportedly biting the victim's arm in the process. The man would later tell the authorities he'd felt forced to comply with his ex's demands for fear of being killed. After the deed was done, Mears reportedly swung the machete around and deliberately urinated on the bed. The victim was able to escape out the back door as his sister arrived home. When interviewed by the police, Mears claimed that their relations hadn't been abusive but reportedly became incoherent in her answers. She was charged with intercourse without consent as well as aggravated burglary, assault with a weapon and unlawful restraint before eventually being deemed unfit to stand trial. Number 3. Patricia Isidore and Junior Francis In June of 2018, a woman was seen driving down a Florida highway at around 70 miles per hour, with her ex-boyfriend clinging to the hood of her car. 24-year-old Patricia Isidore and Junior Francis had broken up about eight months prior, but were still living together. Isidore was getting ready to drive and pick up their daughter. Francis, who didn't want her to go because he also needed the car, launched his body onto the vehicle's hood. As Isidore would later tell officers, she didn't want to deal with any foolishness, so she just kept driving. The video of him holding on for his life on the highway, initially shared on Twitter, subsequently became viral. While clinging to the hood with one hand, Francis used the other to call the authorities, convinced he was going to die. He survived the hellish ride, largely unharmed while Isidore was charged with culpable negligence, a misdemeanor, and was bonded out. Today's topic was requested by Andrei Korbachenko, Ale Lagarde, and King Eric. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Bonita Vivian Kue In June of 2021, Bonita Vivian Kue was arrested for the premeditated and brutal killing of her ex-husband, Kerry Michael Rooney, at his new market home in Brisbane, Australia. A witness had filmed the moment that neighbors rushed to help 51-year-old Rooney as he was lying in a pool of his own blood in the middle of the street. Kue, aged 53, had been monitoring Rooney's habits in the weeks leading up to the horrific attack. She went to his apartment, armed with two knives, a bottle of bleach, and the toy replica of a gun. She waited in the staircase of his building and ambushed the father of one when he returned home. Kue sprayed him in the face with the bleach and, as he turned around, stabbed him in the back and slit his throat. She continued to slash and stab Rooney as he ran down the street, screaming for help. One of the knives was reportedly still lodged in his body when the police arrived at the scene. Kue used the toy gun to deter bystanders from intervening, including a neighbor who'd sought to confront her with a baseball bat. Following her arrest, she'd allegedly told officers that she didn't want to pay child support anymore. Her trial is ongoing, but Kue refused legal representation, claiming she couldn't afford it, even after being told that it could be provided at no charge. She tried to claim self-defense, but detectives assigned to her case reported that there was no evidence of it. Number 1. Joseph Oberhansley 
In December of 1998, in a meth-fueled jealous rage, Utah man Joseph Oberhansley gunned down his teenage girlfriend. He proceeded to shoot his mother, who survived and then fired at his sister, but missed. In a bid to end his life, Oberhansley tucked the gun under his chin and pulled the trigger. He didn't die with the bullet instead becoming lodged in his head, effectively giving him a partial lobotomy, the part of his brain that was affected by the gunshot controls emotions, personality, decision-making and self-control. He ultimately pled guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Oberhansley would later tell a parole board that he regretted killing his girlfriend and that having a bullet in his frontal lobe had made him calmer. However, according to his family members, it turned him into a monster and they noted increasingly obsessive behavior. Even though some of his relatives insisted that Oberhansley remained locked up, he was paroled in 2012 and transferred to Indiana. In 2015, he started dating 46-year-old Tammy Jo Blanton, who was 13 years his senior. Oberhansley was vague about his past, but Blanton eventually learned the truth, which, in the context of his controlling behavior, caused her to fear him. She ended their relationship and asked her father to change the locks of her home. In the early hours of September the 11th of 2014, Blanton called the police claiming that her ex-boyfriend was trying to break into her house. Officers arrived at the address and confronted Oberhansley, who agreed to leave. Later in the day, the police went to check on Blanton again after she hadn't shown up for work. There were signs of forced entry at her home and Oberhansley answered the door claiming she wasn't home. Officers searched him and found a knife in his pocket, covered in blood and hair. In the bathtub, they discovered Blanton's mutilated body under a camping tent. She'd been beaten, stabbed and cut open with an electric saw. Parts of her lungs, heart and brain had been extracted and cooked in a skillet. Oberhansley admitted to officers at the scene that he'd killed and eaten part of his ex but subsequently changed his story claiming he was being framed by two intruders. He made a series of bizarre statements which included him being able to hear Blanton's thoughts and complained of a tingling in his head, telling interviewing officers, I'm like electrifying right now. Oberhansley was ultimately sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be forced to live in the same house with all of your exes for five years or never use a mobile phone again for the rest of your life? Let us know in the comments section below.